On the first day of October every year, Nigerians around the world celebrate our independence. A day when our country was liberated from the fangs of our colonial masters and given full limbs to ride into the horizon of her destiny. But what does it all mean beyond the charade of music and dancing and celebration? What is the significance of our independence? I set out to find out how much young Nigerians knew about our history. They are still depending on the colonial masters, that is the Americans. So we, we cannot stand on our own and talk. The significance of our independence is for we to control our resources. We get to break free from colonial rule. The key word there is liberty and freedom. Apparently, much of our history is lost in youth and pop culture. So I travelled around Nigeria in search of senior citizens who had witnessed our history unfold firsthand. And this is what they had to say about life before independence. Life then was perfect in a minute. Because Europeans are very honest people, hard working, thorough. It was a period of expectancy. Uh, most of us wanted education because of what we believed education would do for us, that is to put us in ascendancy. The jobs were easily got. Most of the people, when they leave school, usually work for government, and then they used to go and study. The British did their best to handle matters with a lot of honest background. They made mistakes, all right. One of the mistakes they made was trying to force people to pay tax. You had the Abba women riot. You had another riot to have Sapere, people refusing to pay tax. But that's because they did not understand what it was for. We started thinking of how to be like the white man, how to take the job of a white man, how to drive a car. I think most of the things then was run by um, expert, a lot of expertise in very high positions. In my school, we had a few missionaries who were we are teachers too. We had about four. Even the head of the school was an, an expatriate. In Sabre, in front of the Jews house, there's a post. That post, you can go there and hold the post and shout, saying somebody has stolen your shoes. The Jew will come out and listen to you. He wouldn't push you to go to Mr. That and Mr. That. He would listen, he hear it himself. When they left, and I had grown up then, I would say, ah, this was what they were doing before. They were doing this, they were doing that, they were doing that. But at that time, we didn't, at least people of my age didn't think of uh, perhaps all the bad things that uh, we now know that they did. 1960 is a very great year for Africa and for Nigeria. That day, I went to King's College and stayed in the top floor watching the issue that was going on in the race course. I was a third year student in the secondary school. I considered myself enlightened enough to know what was happening. I was in hospital. I had a miscarriage 
and I was admitted into the Lagos Island. And I was there that day. Anita was agog with joyful mood. People were going to the stadium, the local stadium for parade, and we were listening from the radio fusion. That's how it was used then to transmit messages. I saw all sorts of people. I all dressed up, properly dressed up, our own people as well. We came out to what is now Murtala Square to have a look at the fireworks and to listen to the broadcast which was made. The Queen given that declaration and um, it was quite exciting. Goes up to the city boundary where the leaders of Lagos are ready to greet her. The Governor General is there to present them to Her Majesty. In the night there was a ballroom dance at the local hotel there. It was near the uh, Tafawa Balewa Square where everything was taking place. We could hear and we could see some of what was going on. As far as the political leaders were concerned at that time, they felt they were ready. And uh, the reins of power were handed over from the governor, then a white man to, you know, Sir Kashim Ibrahim. I was not happy that self-government was going to these people I saw. Not that they were incapable, but at that stage, they had no training whatsoever. All their middle schools were up to class four. And they came out, they could speak a type of English. In fact, the white boys prefer you to write in Hausa. And when a, when a white man appears, they, they, they fall on the floor and rank a day day him. These are the people you are going to give self-government to. I will be quite frank with you. I don't know whether we were ready. Because after independence, we had to do quite a lot of things to keep up. For instance, we didn't have enough uh, um, professionals to take over from the expatriates when they were going. The politicians were, you know, when something like that happened, they would start jostling. Uh -huh. It's now that I know that they were jostling for position. I was one of those who thought we didn't lose quality by the independence coming at the time it did. I'm glad to see that uh, in the last few years the Americans are taking quite a lot of interest in Nigeria. They will vote solidly for the action group on the 12th and put that party in power you will certainly get that weight. My good friend, the Prime Minister of the Federation, Al-Haji Abubakar Tamaba Balewa. But I was determined to find out how much had changed. Had the labor of our heroes gone in vain? Heroes. I think everyone is a hero in this aspect. Some of the heroes, we have a whole person here. Do you know anything about Wolowo? Can you tell us anything about Wolowo? No. no. Do you know anything about um, Azikiwe? Yeah, I think it's in one of Nigerians' currency. Azikiwe. We have Munutala Mohammed. Ojuku. China Chebra. China Chebra, so she be one of them. Sane Abacha. I knew the top people like Awolo or like Akintola and like Fanny Kayode and so on. They were not the weight. The weight was Baba Awolo and the crowd behind him. He came to a position where whatever Awolo was said was the law. What it happened was maybe uh, a change in direction in some areas. Uh, at the time, I would tell you, a lot of the clerks, a lot of the middle great manpower were people who had come from the south. Awolowo was ruling the west and he was doing it fine. At that time, the west was the best organized piece of black man land in the world. Everything was in order. Then suddenly, he wanted to go to the federal and rule the whole country. I found that people were after money. 
when they got to any post, they used to make fun, you don't need any money. I said, no, I don't need money. But this was the problem. Monsieur Sa, you bought a car for the Sultan of Sokoto. She said, yes. Was it you as a person who bought the car or was it the Northern Region government? He said, you see, you hear him? What is his business? I like to... <laughs> what is their business, I like to call? What is their business? A society like that, and you suddenly come overnight, and you suddenly preach that this Sarakuna should rise. You are preaching, technically, you are preaching a revolution. And you go on giving them motorcycles, bicycles, this, that, 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 that. Which, of course, they collected. And they sang for you. Kudi. Sadaka. Kafri Achiakushi. Say, I will the rich man. I will over who gives presents out. The present given out by Talakawa. Achiakushi. Eat it. And nothing will happen to you. They all brought you their stories about Nigeria so that you too can say, I was there. Happy Independence Day.